And the week resumes. It's a Monday, plus sports and plus TV Africa, and so plenty drama over the weekend. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Mukail, welcome. Thank you. Now, um, this is a, a story that's too much drama. And then the aftermath of all the drama is what I, we were talking about on the show today. Now, ex-Nigerian internationals say the Super Eagles 2-0 win over the Central African Republic at the J Japonama Stadium in Cameroon on Sunday did not atone for their shock loss to the lowly country at home last Thursday. The shocking loss to CAR at the Testing Balogun Stadium was the country's first World Cup home defeat in 40 years. The last lost a World Cup qualifying home game to Algeria on October 10, 1981. The Eagles, however, avenged the loss in Cameroon thanks to goals from Leon Balogun and Victor Osime. But despite their satisfaction at the team redeeming their image, they say it didn't take away the disappointment of the loss they suffered at home. Ex-Nigerian midfielder Edema Feludu said it's good that we, we have won today's game, that's yesterday's game, but the victory has not atoned for the loss in Lagos because Nigeria and CAR are not on the same level in football. Former Eagles goalkeeper Uchi Akabuike said although he is delighted with the win in Cameroon, he did not take away the distasteful feeling of losing to a football minnow in CAR. Things like this happen, but one will just try and make the best of every situation. At least we are at the top of the group, which is great. Ex-international Etim Essen said. Now, ex-internationals all the way saying, listen, this does not atone for the loss to CAR. We had no reason, no reason whatsoever in losing that game. And so ex-internationals come out and say, listen, yes, you've won in, in, in Douala, Cameroon. Yes, we're happy at the, at the win. But despite all, we still won't forgive you guys for losing to CAR in Lagos. Um, as a popular Nigerian rapper once said, the Super Eagles don't play against the Falcons. Even if they did, you wouldn't expect them to lose. And that's exactly why these ex-players are coming out and saying a loss against CAR cannot be atoned for by winning the next game because these wins are expected. You're supposed to hold out for pride, for, for glory, because you're playing against the minnow. You're not supposed to let decades of record be overturned at a random moment like... I was the next footballer who played for Inter Milan at the point. Mm. Um, should have been on the, sh on the show today, but he couldn't make it. He's going to be doing a meeting this morning. Um, he said that um, Nigeria against the CAR, that if he was in Italy when he was in Inter Milan, he, and he called home to confirm, they wouldn't ask the Nigeria win. Mm. He would ask how many goals did we score. Mm. That's how much people would expect Spy yeah. goals to win a CAR. When was the last time we saw a game where um, the Super Eagles won by 5 nil, Won by 4? Or exactly. even won by 3? And we have one of the best strikers in the world, right? Yes. And yet, we haven't scored with uh, freedom. We haven't done what is expected of us for a long, long time. The inconsistency, especially in the five years that Geno Roa has been in charge, has been so glaring to observe. It's stupid that we have to put up with this because of the situation that the NFF continues to put us in. Now, this is the reason why some ex-internationals are actually saying that um, Nigeria really did not do well when they lost to CAR in Lagos. Now, this is why somebody like this is talking. Now, Central African Republic CAR head coach, Raul Savoy, says the Super Eagles of Nigeria were able to beat his team thanks to help from the referee. <laughs> the Eagles avenged the shock defeat suffered against CAR on Thursday with a 2-0 win in Douala. But reacting to the outcome of the game, Savoy blamed poor officiating for his team's loss. Both teams will be back in action when the fifth round of the qualifiers resume in November. I don't blame him. Mm, I, I don't mean, blame him now. I mean, He's now saying Nigeria beat them in Douala because of poor, the referee was not doing well. Mm, it was poor officiating. He can't talk now. When they walked into the first match, they did not expect to win. And he would have told his players, go out there and play for pride rather than play to win. Just play to enjoy yourselves. Play to demonstrate. Put up a fight. That was the bare minimum. They ended up winning out of nothing. 
a one nil, and that's how a lot of these upsets happen. It's never by two, three, four goals because the minnows don't expect it. They score, they fall back and defend. Now that they've won that match, the second match they lose two nil, and suddenly he has a reason to brag because once upon a time he beat, beat us. us. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, Kelechi Nacho was in that game. Mm. He missed a free kick, was a sitter, a 20 yard free kick. He should have scored that goal. We're happy he didn't score, really. Well, a whole lot of sports journalists are happy he did not score. We hear he's gone back to London without apologizing to Yin Kawidili, the Brilla FM um, journalist mm -hmm. that he actually attacked mm -hmm. because he asked him two simple questions. And um, we are still on his neck. So, for anybody who knows Kelechi Nacho, should understand that um, the next few days and the next few weeks is going to be tough and rough for him. From we sports journalists, he's not going to find it funny. Possibly, you possibly you cannot harass. You cannot harass a journalist while on duty mm. and conclude that we will let you go like that. Mm. We hear that um, um, Twitter's uh, um, tweets have been sent to um, Lister. Um, um, tweet their handle. Okay. Um, we had um, Instagram Lister Instagram mm. handle sent to them. We've. We've, uh, we we hear that the coach, Lister coach, has actually heard mm. about um, that uh, Ian Achok attacked a journalist. a journalist in Nigeria. And um, what we want the coach to also know is that he has not apologized yet. And we are waiting for that. The apology is the least he can do. And the quicker he does it, the better. Because the truth is, if this was done e anywhere else in the world... Would Kelechi would assault a British journalist? If, it, if he had assaulted a British journalist, we wouldn't be clamoring for an, uh, an apology. There would already be suits filed in court yes. for assault. There would be uh, a, a criminal investigation carried out. The fact is, these players need to recognize that they are extremely privileged. And with that privilege comes great responsibility. They have to uphold that responsibility. And when you err, because the err is to Maybe you, somebody human. must be taught a lesson. Mm. Maybe the Ogundele guy mm. should have gone to court. Well, yes. we'll see. Perhaps, he, like you said, he handled the whole situation Very, as a yeah, mature. Yeah. Perhaps, I mean, this whole thing is not dead yet. It's not going away anytime soon. And he can still go for a lawsuit later. He's possibly taking his time, hoping that he and Nacho will do the right thing. And I hope he does. I, I hope really he do. does, yeah. I really now, do. world champions Le Bleu of France won the Nations League final with goals from Karim Benzema and Kylian Mbappe, earning them a 2-1 win over Spain at the San Siro Stadium yesterday. Didier Deschamps' side has struggled to get a foothold in the game during the first half dominated by Spain. But after going a goal down through Mikel Oyazabal's strike, they came alive. With Paul Pogba, excellent in midfield, Mbappe's speed and movement stretching Spain and Benzema, a constant threat. The French were good value for their victory. Mm. Everybody is all over the place saying Mbappe's goal was offside. He mm. shouldn't have counted. VAR checked it. <clears throat> he wasn't offside. Mm. And... Um, but the French team looked like world champions, you know. Um, yeah. um, Paul Pogba was simply fantastic in midfield. Benzema never stopped worrying the defence. Mm, yes. um, they were a good team all in all. Yes. Um, about the Mbappe goal, um, ultimately it's up for interpretation. The rule didn't used to be like that. It used to be that any pass to a player when he's offside, no matter how much the... But his Spanish defender, defender's leg actually touched the ball before he, he cut him back. Yes, but um, interpretations can be different. A different referee might say a different phase of play hadn't begun just because he tried to intercept. Now, for the fact that uh, France won that game, the same performance they put up against Belgium in their first half was the same way we saw them play against Spain. A, a lot of the times they had to, they receded into themselves and let the opposition uh, come at them. The fact is that match was mostly about the defenders because both teams pressured each other high up the pitch, yeah. but the defense constantly won the ball back and tried to play their own way out of the box. Now, it tells you just how well, just how fantastic the squad for France is. The fact that they could go down to 1-0 to a, a team has... In the final. In the final. As, as good as Spain. As, as Spain. And Spain pushed them right up to the very last minute of injury time, and they could have still taken that match. Wow. Well... Two of our favorites on this show um, are doing well in the Indian Wells. Now, world number four, Alexander Zverev, recovered from a flurry of mistakes in the second set to defeat American Jensen Bronsby, 6-4, 3-6, 6-1 in the second round of the Indian Wells yesterday. 
Now Zverev, who picked up a gold medal in Tokyo this summer, quickly found his composure, dropping just one first serve point in the third set, where he never faced the break points and launching tense aces. In other late action, second seeded Stefanos Sissipas rallied from break down in the second set to earn a 6 2 6 4 win over unseeded Spaniard Pedro Martinez and advanced to a third round meeting with Italian Fabio Fognini. Yeah, we will admit that um, pl um, players like Djokovic, um, Federer, Rafael Nadal have been able to build a world, a planet of their own. Mm. But it's a gradual process. Play uh, players like Gaia Monfils, mm. Stefano Sissipas, Alexander Zverev are gradually building their own planets too around themselves. We are in for an, a wonderful next decade and a half of tennis, men's tennis. I can't say enough how how thrilled I am to watch these players play. Zverev, Sissipas, Berrettini, uh, um, Dominic Thiem. These players are so good that they defy the logic that um, jo Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, Nadal and Federer are the best we've ever seen. They defy the logic because in the next uh, decade or so, we might be here talking about Sissipas, Zverev, Dominic Thiem, and the list goes on because they're more than just the three. They're five. And we're looking at the possibility that there will be a sixth and a seventh um, um, world yeah. dominating t a male tennis player. So we're looking at a, a, a 10 years, 15 years of tennis bliss whereby these players will probably break the records that uh, these uh, players have already set now. We won't, this is not the end of the <laughs> journey. Huh? Okay, now, this guy <clears throat> had an accord problem. Mm. He actually had to go for rehab. He was suspended for boxing for a while. But we all admit that this mm. is one of the greatest boxers in this generation mm. as we speak. Mm -hmm. Tyson Fury. <clears throat> now, um, on this show, I've said it many times. Shane Wajidagba has come on, on phone and said it too. He has come on this show and said it too. You have said it too. Victor has said that it. I pity Anthony Joshua right now. Mm. And before this match, we pitied him. Mm. We are still pitying him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to put sentiment into it. If Anthony Joshua fights Tyson Fury 10 times, he will beat him 10 times. I don't I'm, know. I'm not sure of that. Um, I don't and know this that. guy has only shown that he's a brute. Against Wilder, yes, he went down twice in the fourth round. But he came back up and when he went, Wilder went down, he went down. Mm. He needed a pillow to stay mm. down. <laughs> you know, he went down. Well, um, I don't know about Joshua. I would rather not talk about Joshua because he is in, he's in the workroom right now, putting finishing touches to the next time he comes back. And he has a, an ability to come back from um, defeats. Yeah, for the record, um, in case um, you guys don't know, um, the match has been fixed officially for March next year All right. against Osik. Okay. Mm. Um, now, as for Fury... Everything he said in the post about interview was basically spot on. He is perhaps the best in his era. And he has a reason to pity everyone else. But he's, he, I think he spoke too much because he went as far as saying things like, um, at a point his water was spiked. Um, mm. They did different things to make Every, sure he didn't win. And Everyone has. I mean, after the, after the bout, the, um, Wilder's team were checking Fury's gloves. Everyone has a reason to say something, but until such a proof is offered up, we have no reason to believe them. It's all just rhetoric. So um, this should be the end of a Wilder Fury yes. trilogy. Yes, of unless, course, um, unless, of course, Wilder goes on to beat someone of repute, someone worth beating. And he comes back to Fury again. And has a reason to come back and challenge again. Fury again. Now, Tyson Fury has stated he's the greatest heavyweight of his generation after knocking out Deontay Wilder, bringing it close to their headline trilogy. Fury was twice knocked down himself, but landed the definite punch in the 11th round to defend his WBC crown and remain unbeaten. It was the third meeting between the pair following a controversial draw in 2018 and a seventh round stoppage in favor of Fury in 2020. You see, he just vindicated me now. I said I'm pitying Joshua. He said I pity any guys, any guy in this generation who wants to fight me. I pity the him. Really, mm -hmm. you need to be pitied if you want to fight a Tyson Fury. This is the greatest boxer in this. And he says, don't compare me to past champions like Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. No, but in this generation, I'm the greatest. We'll see. And he can say that. We'll see. He's got Usyk lined up, and perhaps even. If he survives that uh, bout, there's a likelihood that 
uh, a Joshua is still lying in wait. We don't know. These are these statements of definitiveness about being the well, greatest. But he deserves to talk like this. Right now, yes. yes he, he has does. every reason to yes, talk like does. this. But you know what? He has one belt. Yusik has three. Yeah. We're looking forward to that match. Whoever wins that so match... he unifies all three belts plus one, that's four. That's four. Wow. Then we can say the now, greatest... Now, during the race in Turkey in Istanbul, mm. Hamilton came out fuming after the race. He, he, he came out fifth, first off, mm. and then Bottas won, a Verstappen came second. He entered the race with penalties, I think a 20 mm. points penalty, and then his, his Mercedes team, team called him back at a point during the race. And mm -hmm. I think he said that affected him. He would have been on the podium if they didn't call him back. And he should have not listened to them, but he listened and look at where he is now. Well, um, He was really fuming. I would always advise F1 racers that your team is there to help you. They're not there to hinder you. You could end up middle of the race, something goes wrong. The team is far away. And we don't want to see crashes. We've seen too many of them throughout the history of Formula One. As exciting as the sport is, that is the one drawback. It is the thing that makes it so dangerous. A footballer can break his leg and still walk. Maybe never play again, but he can still walk. Uh, uh, a racer gets into a major accident. That's, it's over. That's death. Mm. Valtteri Bottas ended his year-long drought with a dominant victory in Turkey yesterday, while unhappy Mercedes teammate Lewis Hamilton finished fifth and lost the Formula One championship lead to Red Bull's Max Verstappen. Verstappen is 24, he was run-up, and 15,584 seconds behind the fin at a wet Istanbul park to overturn a two-point deficit to Hamilton and walk away six points clear with six races remaining. Red Bull teammate Sergio Perez finished third with Ferrari's Charles Leclerc fourth and ahead of seven times world champion Hamilton, who had started 11th due to an engine penalty. Hamilton might have also been on the podium, but Mercedes called him in against his judgment for a late stop from third place for a fresh set of intermediate tyres with the track drawing. Of course, um, Bottas is on top of Verstappen is ahead of Hamilton, mm. six points ahead of him, but six races to go. Mm. So he can still, Hamilton can still do his thing and come back from the dead as usual. You know, um, as much as I say that, uh, as much as I said that, um, it would have been, it's beneficial for Hamilton to listen to his team because they're not there. They actually changed his tires for so that the, 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 the track would dry up. It was for his own safety. Yes, but at the same time, you have to love the spirit because he's a champion. He is the best in this sport. And it is, he said he, he wishes he had listened to his gut. And the gut of champions is based on past I have experiences. To go on. I have to go <clears> on. I have to go on. No yeah. matter what. And they dare to push the boundaries. And that's what makes them champion. So as much as I'm happy that he listened to his team, I'm also doubly happy that he has the appetite that he's not willing to rest on his laurels. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Now, um... Early yesterday, in the English Women's Super League, Chelsea beat Leicester 2-0. Mm. And of course, um, they put them on top of the league. But Arsenal played a few um, hours later, 1-3-0, went back on top of the league. But the Women's Super League getting hot up. The, the, mm. the big teams doing well. Arsenal, mm. Man City, Chelsea, Man U, all doing well in the Women's League. Well, the, the fact is, these uh, Arsenal, Chelsea, Man City, these, play, these uh, women's teams are born out of the successful men's team. There's a lot of resources that's allowed into their own sport. And then it, 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 it's like we've talked about on this show how Man City might have bought the league, Newcastle are in line to buy the league. Don't be surprised in the next few years, Newcastle's women's football team will also be in lights or yes. something. <laughs> Chelsea scored two late goals to beat Leicester City 2-0 in the Women's Super League. It was a tough game for the Blues, who despite controlling possession, didn't create any decent chances in the first half. But goals from substitute Pernell Harder and Fran Kirby in the last 10 minutes gave the Blues their fourth win in five games. Arsenal still atop the league after beating Everton later yesterday. The women in blue, Chelsea 2 listening in the women, English Women's Super League. Mokai Tinubu, thank you very much. Happy for to, the show. Happy to be around. Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa on a Monday. Thank you for joining us. Join us same time tomorrow, same station. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your hearts, do some sports. <laughs>